Hey, what's happening? Welcome to Mage TV. So Liverpool have signed Dominic Sobersly. We haven't seen him yet in action, of course, because he's only due to return for pre-season in a week or so. But pre-season is coming in very, very quickly. And with it, we're going to get our first real signs, look, inclination of what Liverpool are going to be playing like when the new season starts. Now, I think from what we saw at the back end of the season, we largely know that we're going to go with, I think, persist with the box midfield, which is the three box three, which is the inverted fullback, which is the Trent formation, which is the formation that largely Arsenal play, largely Man City play, and seems to be the next sort of great tactical evolution for teams that are expected to have lots and lots of possession and have got the right calibre of players and play at the right level of football to play, basically. Liverpool have spunked 60-odd million pounds on a footballer, in addition to that, obviously, £35 million pound paid for Alexis McAllister. So what are they going to do? Where does he fit in to Liverpool's new-look system, new-look midfield, new-look overall outlook um, on football? Because on the signing video, I talked about him being the Jordan Henderson upgrade, replacement, you know, study, whatever you want to call it. And I had a few people saying, oh, no, 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 no. He's not going to play there. You know, he plays out wide and he plays this. You know, he could be, like, playing in Salah's position and stuff. And I think that's a possibility. So what I've done is I've gone through the, a number of formations and a number of sort of permutations as well and had a little look at how Jordan Henderson was playing the role in question at the back end of last season to see if there's any natural fit in there. I also want to talk as well, I'm going to touch upon Mohamed Salah, because I think that's an interesting point. He's going to be going to AFCON, um, barring unforeseen circumstances in January, which is going to leave us sure to play in that position. It's a position we don't have a lot of footballers to play in already. Um, I'm going to do a video on that. Actually, probably my next video is going to be on what the next sort of transfer moves are and where do Liverpool need to continue to add depth or to re replace, refresh the, the squad. So let's start with, very simplistically, the box formation. So the box midfield formation. So this is what Liverpool played at the end of last season. When you write it out in possession, um, it's effectively three... Two, two, three, or three, four, three. If you want to be, um, if you want to look at it that way, out of possession, of course, it's far more like a four, three, three. It's more, you know, traditionally how we understand Klopp's Liverpool. Trent obviously drops in at right back, but for the for illustrative purposes, because there's so many permutations, and we're not going to get lost. This is not. <laughs> This is not my level of tactical depth. And I, I presume if you're watching this channel, probably not yours. I will highly recommend the Deep Dive Show on the Redman YouTube channel and on Redman Plus uh, with Chris Pajak and Josh Williams. They do loads more in depth on this. But I'm trying to simplify just to, to kind of get the talk and point out. So we'll line it up as, as, the, as the box midfield formation. So that basically means the back three nominally is Robertson, Van Dijk, Canate, Fabinho and Trent are in a double pivot. And then ahead of them, you're going to have Alexis McAllister and you're going to have Dominic Sobersly. And then ahead of that, take your pick. It's probably going to be Gapo through the middle. It'll definitely be Salah off the right. And then it's Diaz or Jota. Let's say, let's say Jota, you know, whatever. It doesn't really matter. That's what I think the most easy and natural fit is for Sobersly. Because the thing about playing that formation, it's, formations are not, <laughs> formations never work out how they're written out on paper. And that's the complication with, of course, discussing Liverpool's formations. And particularly when you're discussing Trent's position, which I don't want to get lost in again on this video, because it's, he play, he'll play loads in midfield, but he's not a midfielder. He's technically a right back because when, when the shit hits the fan and everyone has to get back in and stop the bad stuff from happening, Trent plays in the right back position. It's, it's, uh, even I rattle my brain on it sometimes, but that's largely where we're at. So yeah, Sobersly will play, I think, where Jordan Henderson was playing at the back end of that season, which is that right hand eight slash 10. And what you see from that and what we saw from Jordan Henderson, because I don't know, I didn't know a lot about this formation at all as the season progressed. So it's been a real crash course and trying to figure out what Jürgen Klopp wants from it. What, what, what is the ideal? Because we've been playing it with the midfielders that we've had for 4-3-3. So there was a chance that what we were seeing actually wasn't a fair representation of what the system was going to be. Are we just putting square pegs in round holes? And that's a big question about Jordan Henderson. But I trust, because I know what Jordan Henderson's like as a footballer and as a character, 
and his role within the squad as captain and a, and a natural leader. I think he will have been trying to fulfil what is asked or demanded of that role. So I actually think looking at what Jordan Henderson was doing is probably a reasonably good basis for comparison for what is going to be asked of Dominic Soberslight in that position. And there's three situations which I think are really important. First and foremost is that there's opportunities to drift in centrally and drift more into a natural 10 position. I think that's kind of a given. However, the two that are the most functional of it are certain situations. So one, for example, the ball will break. And there's, I, I've used the Leicester game. I'll use the Leicester game at the back end of the season. We've beaten 3 nil away from home as an example. But you can go back to most of the, the, the games where Jordan Henderson played that role and get this kind of these kind of examples. The earliest chances in the game, ball comes to Luis Diaz on the left-hand side. He picks it up and Jordan Henderson... He's ahead of Cody Gakpo in midfield. Gakpo's dropped deep to get the ball and get the attack moving again. Henderson is beyond them. So when Diaz gets into that wide position, just on the left-hand edge of the penalty area, Jordan Henderson is arriving ahead of Gakpo, more into a number nine style position. Now, in this particular instance, the, the ball breaks down, it doesn't end up with Gakpo, and then the, the chance goes away. But I thought that was really interesting because that's actually really different from how Henderson was playing the right hand eight of a midfield three. In 4-3-3, it's far more about getting up and down, far more box to box, and yes, supporting the attack and sometimes getting into sort of 10-like positions, but it's not a lot of bursting centrally and being the, the tip of the spear, being the furthest forward player for Liverpool between the sort of width of the, the six-yard box. So that's really, really interesting. And the other one is a bit more how we've come to expect Jordan Henderson to play. But what happens is you pick the ball up and Jordan Henderson picks the ball up in the sort of middle of the park, right of centre, turns on it, opens his body up and gives the ball over to Mo Salah. Mo Salah then has got one thing on his mind and that's basically beeline for the goal, which he heads towards. Jordan Henderson immediately on releasing that ball then accelerates to go round Mo Salah. It's what he's done for a very, very long time. It's, how, it's one of the examples of how he dovetails really well with Mo Salah because it allows him to maintain width. And it means that although Salah in this particular attack in the Leicester game tries to take on 500 men, as he's wont to do. And look, it works. Sometimes it works. And we all laud Mo Salah for his brilliant ability to score wonder goals. Quite often it breaks down. But what you've got there is an option. Salah goes more central, so he's working his way into the 18-yard box. He's drawing the attention of the defenders and it opens up an opportunity to a couple of things. If it breaks down, you've maintained the width and you've maintained your numbers in attack. So the ball can be could be kicked out or it could be pushed towards Jordan Henderson and he's ready, willing and able to gather it in a crossing situation. The other one is obviously a deliberate one where he then, and, and this the example I've used here was just literally, literally the first one that came to me when I was looking through some of the highlights. If Henderson's actually maybe half a yard quicker or starts to run a little bit earlier, um, he's in a position to start an, an overlapping run down that right-hand side, which Salah then plays through. And then Jordan Henderson at the byline, looking to cut back to, you then got potentially in line, Salah, Gakpo, Diaz slash Jota, and even Curtis Jones have all arrived in the box by that point. So what I'm kind of driving at with this is the, the skill set required from that. Henderson's definitely got the got the motor, and he's certainly got the tactical discipline to do it. But I don't think anyone would look at how his career's gone over the last decade and say, I really want Jordan Henderson arriving central in the box. You need more predatory finishers. It is interesting, actually, that um, Carvalho, who I think has got that ability, has gone on loan to Leipzig. And it'd be interesting to see. I was unsure about what his long-term future lies. But if he can play a bit more in those areas for Leipzig, he might come back a more useful player next season. But that's that's by the by for now. So obviously he's got that shot on him. He's got a natural, he's got he's got the engine, perhaps, perhaps similar or better pace. You know, if it's if it's better pace than Jordan Henderson, then that's gonna be a huge benefit. Um good high good physique, great kind of player, I think, to have in and around the 18 yard box. But also look at where he's played in his career so far. He's played in basically every position along the front line. So he's played a lot of right wing as well, which you know, when we talk about the history of Henderson. You know, one thing that always gets brought up is him playing right mid for Pearl under Kenny Dalglish. And I think he's fine in those areas, but he's not 
he's, he's good in small spaces and he's a Jürgen Klopp's words, not mine, but he's not really a do a little trick and get past a, a player kind of guy. I feel like his more recent history of a footballer, if you're cropping up in wide areas, as Dominic Sob is like, he's going to be a much a much more natural fit for that, as well as arriving more central ahead of Cody Gappo. And the thing that I touched upon right at the start as well, arriving in that 10 position, drifting into the 10 on the edge of the 18-yard box, we know he's got one of the purest strikes in world football. Those are the kind of opportunities that are going to present when you're in those kind of positions. And I don't think he's going to score 10 worldies a season. I think Liverpool try to limit their players from taking pot shots, um, and actually almost to the to the to the detriment of Jordan Henderson in more attack and roll. So I don't think I think he understands the theory. You don't take shots because your percentage of scoring from outside the box, if you look at XG, is absolutely fractional. So actually, in terms of the data, Liverpool players are being told maintain possession, work the ball, work the space, work the chances. You'll create a better chance passing it on it might do 10 more passes down the line or 20 more passes down the line but you're more likely to score from there than you are from shooting but Jordan Henderson also isn't an expert long range shooter and when Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain has played for Liverpool a bait in far more limited opportunities um, he has been given a license to take a few more shots because he does have that certainly in his locker so you've got three sort of scenarios of Sobers like playing in the Jordan Henderson role but actually the skill set that he's bringing to the table means that Henderson's doing a very place card version of it I think Sobers like is what we're looking for what Jürgen Klopp and Pep Landers are looking for from that role he's going to take what Jordan Henderson's doing and he's going to elevate it as well One thing I wanted to just move on to, just very briefly before we before we um, before we go on, this is obviously what else he can do. So Liverpool, I think, will predominantly play that formation. But successful Liverpool sides very rarely play, especially the Jurgen Klopp. By the way, play one formation all season long. It's a bit of a, I don't know. People people remember the past weirdly. When Liverpool were at their better than most successful, they didn't consistently just play 4 3 3 week in, week out. They had break glass options. We've seen Liverpool play 4 2 3 1 at the end of football matches. In fact, there was a little spell, I think, in 1819, where we have, we have that where Jen Jakiri comes in and plays right to the three. Mo Salah plays through the middle. We played um, 4 2 2 2 2 2 2 4 2 2 2. Um, we played 4 4 2 at times. So, one thing that Thomas Light does, and it's been talked about, is versatility. I can think. I think of a couple of formations where he might be quite useful. Uh, the first and foremost is a bit of an old school, old school English tradition, but it's four four two. It might actually suit Luis Diaz as well, where you're playing right mid in a four in a more traditional line flat four. Or a base, the wingers can obviously get up and support the attack more. Where you could have a Diaz, a McAllister, a Fabinho, and a Sobers lie across there and then you've actually got pace and, and dynamism and trickery and great delivery as well from sort of deeper areas and the other one um is obviously a classic 4-3-3 for Liverpool as well where he's effectively just dropping into the right hand eight of the old school three now of course all of these right now mean Trent going back to normal right back so I don't think we'll do this lots um, but it might be a good example of a Liverpool out of possession side as well but the other the other thing to consider is with AFCON Lumen in January as well. well. What might that mean? And just for an example of what I've done is in terms of the 4-3-3, because he's played in those attacking positions, and it was mentioned, I believe, in the Athletic article, that Liverpool kind of see him as, as a potential understudy for Salah in there. Now, look, if he's absolutely flying in that 8 kind of role, 8-10 role, the right of the, the top right hand corner of the box. I don't think they'll be actively looking to move him and hopefully someone like Ben Doak has kicked on by that point as well and maybe he plays himself into an opportunity or they'll do what they've done previously where you move Jota over to the right hand side, Dia starts on the left but you've got an option there with Thomas Lai. There's a bit of a backup option there as well where you bring Elliot back in. Elliot by this point will have had the first half of the season, presumably games in the Europa League. He might be absolutely flying and needing more game time. Now you could play Harvey Elliott in Salah's position because he's got that inverted quality. He's done it for us before. But you could do Sobers like there just as easily and potentially have a nice little bit of rotation there, which I haven't really thought about. And this could be something that Liverpool move towards next season and the season beyond. But two guys who actually know how to play that role adds an extra level of fluidity to what we're doing as well. So, yeah, food for thought. I, I, um, 
I think it's. I think again, I've said it before. I think it's a really good sign. I think he's got more flexibility than maybe we 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 would even begin to consider. I've only scratched the surface on what Liverpool can possibly do with him there. But I do just to kind of summarise, really see him as the natural upgrade from Jordan Henderson. The next. Now we've seen Henderson in his um, postseason, preseason training camp looking well, looking very healthy. Um, and he's going to fight for his life on his hands and he won't let that go easily. He's not just going to s- step back and, and bow out and say, oh, here you go, Dominic, have my place in the side. It's not how he does things, but that's a, a really good thing for Liverpool. Now, can he can he continue to progress? Can he get better? 33, who knows? But that's the level of competitiveness we're looking for. I want Dominic Sobers like coming in and he's got to fight for minute one. He's not made it to Liverpool. He's not done. He needs to improve as well. That's a very healthy environment to be in. It's often referenced. I think Carragh used to say this about like the 2000s. So a lot of lads used to come to Liverpool and they thought, they thought, I'm at Liverpool, I've made it. And like the work stops. No, the work starts when you get to Liverpool. All the work you've done to then is just getting yourself to the starting blocks. It's like qualifiers. You're getting to the World Championships now. You're at the Olympics now. You're at the World Cup. Whatever, you've made the squad. Now you've got to go out and perform. So I think this lad's got it. Uh, I can see him being a, a tremendous elevator for what Liverpool are hoping to do. Um, but he's got a challenge. He's got a fight on his hands to make sure that he is right. It will be new to him. There will be things that he has to learn. And preseason is going to be very, very exciting. What do you think? Do you think any of this is right? Do you think I'm wildly wrong on it? Who wants to bet with me that he will or won't be playing in that position when the season starts? Um, drop a like. Any thoughts in the comments section below? Uh, if you want this t-shirt, it's a Suarez Cerveza t-shirt. Uh, that is on redmanmerch.com. And uh, if you want to get more on Dominic Sobersly, tactical deep dives, the deep dive show, as mentioned, with Chris Pajak and Josh Williams. There's loads on for free on Redman YouTube channel, but there's loads of extra stuff and there's interviews with his coaches, uh, former manager, uh, former Liverpool goalkeeper, Adam Bogdan, who's played with him uh, for, for Hungary as well. Uh, Dan Club sat down, did an interview. Anyway, you get all of this. I gave a code out last week. The code was wrong. This is the right code. If you want 50% off a yearly subscription to redmanplus.com, use the code Bobby. B-O-B-B-Y. Like for me, you know. Bobby. 50% off a yearly subscription to Redman Plus. Fill your boots. Get a full year of it. Get all that Bobby Firmino documentary, all our Sobers lie analysis and interviews and in-depth features, and of course the rest of the transfer window, and a whole year in Liverpool being absolutely amazing with Dommy, Slob, Sobo, Sobo killing it in the Europa League <laughs> um, yeah Philly Boots uh, thank you so much for watching uh, and I'll be back with another video next week